All right, so today's problem is they give us a string and they want us to know if it's valid. So in this string, there's only three types of tokens possible. One is a left token, one is a right token, and lastly is a wildcard token. So this wildcard token, we could treat it as a right token or a left token or empty. Um, they give us some rules, like every left token needs to have a right token, every right token needs to have a left token, and, but the left token needs to go before the right token. Okay, so let's look at some examples. We see here that here our, our wildcard will probably be the empty token. Um, and here the wildcard will probably be the left token so that we get these two to pair up and then we get the outside two to pair up. So usually with these problems, if we try and imagine, if we're trying to imagine like, oh, like what should the wildcard be? This becomes a very difficult question because for example, if we had a string like this, um, the wildcard could be empty, right? So this is a valid string, or um, we could make the wildcard look like that. So the first one was a right and the second one was a left, and this is also a valid string. So instead, what I'd like to ask is, what makes a string invalid? So if we can detect when a string is invalid, then that's another way of solving the question of checking if the string is valid. And this only boils down to two cases. So one, um, we have too many right tokens, not enough, not enough left or wild to, to pair it with them. So this, you can imagine that we have an example where we have something like that, and then there's a bunch of right tokens at the end. Um, maybe some of these are wild cards, but you can see that even if these wild cards were made into left tokens, um, we don't have enough to pair with all of these right tokens at the very end. So the other, the second example is we have too many left tokens, not enough right or the wild cards to pair with them. So in this example, um, everything could be fine in the beginning. You know, we have perfect pairings, and then at the very end, we just suddenly have a bunch of left tokens. Now, maybe one of these is a wild card, but you can see that even at the very end here, we have one left token, and there's no right tokens to match them up. Or maybe if there is a right token, there's no right token to match this character up. Um, so these are our two failure cases, and that's what we want to detect instead. So if, a, if we detect a failure case, then we know that it's invalid. Otherwise, it must be a valid string, and we don't really care like what, which, like what wildcard gets used and turned into what. So let's figure out these two instead. Okay, so in our first example, let's see what we can do. We have to get all our characters somehow, so let's do this. And we're going to keep track of the number of left and wild tokens. And now let's loop through. And what happens if we see a right token? Or actually, let's see. What happens if we see not a right token? Well, then it has to be left or wild. So we can increment our counter here. Um, and here, if we see a right token, we have to pair it with a left token. So if left wild equals zero, so we have no tokens for it to pair with it, we can return false. This is not a valid string. Otherwise, we're gonna use one of these tokens to pair with our right token. So at the end here, what we claim is that there, there are enough left left and wild tokens to satisfy all right tokens. So all our rights are checked, good to go. So now we have the other question of, we need to detect if we have too many left tokens, because here, you know, our right tokens are all paired. See, this right token is happy, um, this right token is happy, this right token is happy, and then we had one of these wild cards here, so that means this right token would have been happy. Um, and then we're solving, solving, solving. And here at the end, we realize, wait, we have too many left tokens. So how do we figure this case out? So let's have number of left tokens. And then we'll also do another loop. 
what you'll notice in the end is that these two for loops can actually be combined, and that's what we'll do at the very end. But for now, let's keep it as a separate problem. Um, so if we see a left token, whoa, we see a left token, we're going to increment our left count. Otherwise, we're going to decrement our left count. Now, the case that we have to watch out here is that it doesn't really make sense for the this to be negative. So here, when we're decrementing, like we always had this check to see if it's equal to zero, then we return false. But here, um, that case doesn't really match because we could have something like this and then, you know, a bunch of things like that. So here we're like decrementing left, but it doesn't make sense for it to, to return false or become negative because this could just be empty space, right? So what we'll do instead here is we'll have left will be always equal to at least to zero. So we'll never go below zero. And then here, the exit condition, the check condition here becomes whether or not that left equals zero. So whether or not that every time that we incremented left saying that we've seen one, we found a corresponding right token to close it up. Okay, so this should work. So let's give it a try. We'll try and submit. Oh, and you see we messed up somewhere. Let's see where we messed up. Um, so we have our left. Okay, then we have here, checking the left tokens. Ah, I see what happened. So we don't need the left minus minus here because we already minus one here. Okay, we'll try and submit again. All right, so this is a proper solution. Now what we'll notice here is that this left wild and this left are two separate variables. So they don't actually need to be in two different for loops. So if we want to combine them, it's as easy as putting this here and putting this here. So this is still solving the same question. It's a little bit more messy now, but essentially this is making sure all our right tokens have a pair. And this is making sure all our left tokens have a pair. Um, so that's the end of this question. Um, if you really wanted to like play code golf and make it even shorter, I'm sure you can. Like you could do something like left wild is equal to, you know, if our, if it's a right token, then it's, um, then we decrement it by one. Otherwise we uh, increment it by one. Um, so this would be plus equals something like that. Um, and then you'd check like if left wild less than equal to, I guess less than zero, return a false. So these two have pretty much the same meaning. And then this left token, we could have something like left is equal to, um, if you're the left token, then you can increment it by one. Otherwise you decrement it by one um, but you want to make sure that left is always doesn't go into negative because that doesn't that doesn't make sense for it to go negative. Um, so that would have the same meaning. Um, so arguably it's 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 cleaner, but it also the logic makes less sense now. Um, but you know it's still the same solution. So this should still work. Yeah, so it still works. Um, and then if we want to do a quick runtime, everything here is constant operations, and we're really only looping through um, our string s. So if our string s, so that means we're just o of n here, and that's the end of that. All right, so that's the end of today, and I'll see you on the next one.